Hi guys, so I just had a great idea. Basically, sometimes you have YouTubers, they record videos even if they don't want to. You can clearly tell if somebody isn't in the mood for making a YouTube video, yet he does it anyway because YouTube money and living off of YouTube and all that. So yeah, sometimes you have some mood swings and you don't want to record YouTube videos. And I have that as well, obviously, and I don't record all the time. Hell, sometimes there's this like uh, I, I don't record videos for two weeks simply because I don't feel like it and if I'm in the mood for it I just rec record so many videos but I just had an idea and this might actually work because what I just did before I was making this video or at least doing this commentary is I was wasting time in a great way I was watching all the intros of all the shows that I watched in my in my childhood and watching basically awesome stuff so now I'm in a great mood so I, I don't know if that would actually work for anyone if that's actually a good idea but I guess it's cool but anyway um, about the city basically what I was playing what I was planning for this episode is people have been talking about a river and I was like I definitely do want a river somewhere because first of all of course a river looks great that's really awesome but it's also something that you can place the camera on you can take nice pictures and movies from a river and as cliche as it may be a riverside is always beautiful to have in your city and of course there's there's one more aspect to that it's the fact that you generally don't have cities when when there's not a river nearby or the sea or something like that because apparently you can't trade and more, more important things that cities need to do because they're cities so yeah whatever floats their boat so um no pun intended but so yeah, I figured I would have a river, so here we go, a nice little river, and a bridge. Now of course that does need a little uh, boulevard, if you will, so of course I'm kind of going to build that, but it's not going to be all that special, it's just going to be a normal road, except it's going to have an extra wide sidewalk with planters and fancy looking lamp posts, so that everybody's going to be s certain that this is a boulevard and this is like the little Paris of this area, except it's not really going to be like Paris because you can't, you can't obviously do that. Though it would be pretty amazing because at this point I have pretty much given up on the idea of building a realistic city. I never really wanted to do that in the first place, but the more I build on this city, the more I give up on that entire idea. For multiple reasons but basically the fact that I want to create a city that looks nice and that I like and the problem is that I don't like most cities in real life and especially I wouldn't like building them in, in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 because um, considering the size of the downtown and the buildings and the way all, everything looks this would be in the middle of a city with at least 60,000 inhabitants and you can't make a city like that in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, as in size-wise, there's no way you can really do that. And you're going to have to fill the entire area with suburban areas with all kinds of houses that look exactly the same. And you don't want to do that in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3, at least I don't want to. There's no space for that, and it's very boring. Nobody would want to watch that, and it's not really interesting to look at. And it's probably a waste of time anyway, because nobody cares about those areas, right? People just live in them, and there's nothing else, really. So yeah, I'm just going for a utopian style city, if you will, but then again, I'm still afraid to say that because, of course, it's not going to be the best city ever, and of course it's going to have a couple of ugly buildings in it because I'm just winging it here, just building random buildings and hoping that everything will work out, but really, there's no planning involved, so some buildings will kind of look not as good in the end. Though, that's again, that's not really a problem because every city, of course, has some ugly buildings in it, but me being a perfectionist, I don't want that, and every building in my city needs to be perfect. But I did decide that if I build a building that I don't really like, I'm just going to move on and not remove it. Because otherwise, I turn out like that one person. Like I, I know people in the RCT3 community who do this, and le let me give you one piece of good advice. Never, ever, ever do that. Never be that perfectionist who removes his things when he doesn't really like it. Because what you get then is you build things that maybe others really like actually, but then you feel like it's not perfect and you remove the entire thing. I know somebody, I'm not going to drop names because that's not really nice, but like, well actually I know mo more persons, actually there's one person who's, who's worked on a coaster for three years and, and many people know that. It's, it's, it's Ashbridge of course. There, there was this wooden coaster on RCT Lounge and somebody worked on that thing for three years 
and it was not it was not like it's the biggest thing ever but people made huge amusement park in a shorter amount of time simply because muffins or from Ashbridge he just felt like it wasn't perfect every time and decided to remove things and redo them and that went on for three years when he eventually decided that he would make a POV and I think he's not even that happy with it even though he should be because Ashbridge is one of the best wooden roller coasters in Roller Coaster Echo 3 ever hands down it's amazing but what what I sometimes see and like what I sometimes see some people doing is they build things and then when they're like I don't really like this they remove something and they don't just remove a small portion of something but they remove the entire building and that's that's just going to be a waste of time because for one you don't know for certain that the building that you're going to um, replace it with is actually something that you you're going to like sometimes if you remove a building and feel like okay I'm going to build something else the the thing that you built in place of the old one uh, it actually looks worse than the old one so there you're not just back to square one but it's actually worse than what you started with. Really, what I, I kind of feel like is the best thing to do is just come to terms with the building that you built, even if you don't like it, and just move on. Like, hell, even some other people might just like it, because that's what I've seen with some people that I kind of, I've kind of known for a long time. They would send me things and be like, well, I don't like this thing, I'm going to remove it. And I'd be like, no, don't, because I like it. Like... I know that you usually want to have, make projects that you like and not anybody else, but then again, I feel like my buildings would be pretty safe if I didn't even like it that much, but others do. I would be pretty happy with it. I would just keep it there for the others to look at or something like that. I don't really know. I just feel like it's a waste of effort and, well, creativity in a sense. If you remove buildings that you've built simply because they're not perfect. So yeah, that was my huge talk about that and right now I'm building this little building which I designed to be well I didn't design this building to be anything really I just started out with a general shape I was like man I'm just gonna try this and I didn't really like the shape of it but now that I built it I felt like it kind of looks like a church so I put that cross on top of it but the cross just kind of looked ugly so decided to remove that thing in the end and just keep it like I don't know some kind of community buildings I don't know if you have those things in, in America, but at least over here in the Netherlands, every neighborhood has their own little community building where they do community things, but that might just be socialism in the Netherlands. But yeah, that's basically that. So I felt like, hmm, might as well make one of those things. Really, you can you can pretty much say anything about this building. I don't think the, the shape and the size of this building really dictates what, what it is. So... I do need to watch out that I don't make too many like um, buildings for the community in the city as a whole because I build I've been building way too many shops and stuff like this and schools so, some I don't even know what some things are supposed to be when you compare it to how many houses I've actually built and how many actual office buildings I've actually built so I'm definitely going to make a suburban area somewhere and of course I'm going to add a couple more towers to the downtown area definitely not too many though and not very high towers simply because also something that i want to say is when you're building a downtown and nobody's probably going to do this but when you build a huge skyscraper it's going to dwarf the other things so like um there's a city in the netherlands and um well everybody knows it why should i even say this it's rotterdam and everybody praises it for its amazing skyline or something i don't like it at all it's it's freaking ugly but whatever and the highest building is 160 meters and there have been people proposing to build a 300 meter high tower in the middle of rotterdam but that simply wouldn't work simply because it would dwarf the other buildings the skyline looks somewhat impressive right now because all of the buildings in the entire area are as flat as a pancake so really any somewhat high skyscraper is going to stand out and create a nice skyline but as soon as you place a 300 meter high sky um, skyscraper in the middle of that it's kind of going to dwarf it kind of in a similar way to what the shard does in london except the shard is not even that high can uh, when you compare it to the other buildings in london so it doesn't it isn't really that bad though honestly if you ask me uh, london skyline is not all that good either when we're on the topic of skylines, I think the um, uh, skyline of Frankfurt is probably the best one in Europe. And also Warsaw is really good and Moscow is really good. 
Paris is pretty decent, London is pretty decent too, and that's about it when it comes to skylines I think. Skylines aren't really a Europe thing. I think the best skylines in the world are in Asia, definitely. Tokyo is really awesome, and Singapore and Hong Kong of course are ridiculously good, and Dubai would be another great example of what could have been a, sky a great skyline, but what was kind of ruined by the enormous tower in the middle of it. But anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you all in the next episode. So, bye.